I love it. Well, look at us. We're both in festive colors. Indeed. Festive. Festive, you know. Purple's not really festive. It's, it's not not festive. You don't think this light purple is festive? You don't think this is festive? Define festive. Fun. Happy. Upbeat. Okay, when I think of festive, I think of like holidays. Like I think of like Well, know, that's Christmas. not... That light blue isn't festive. You have purple on your... But th neck. that's what I'm saying, though, is like when I think of festive, I don't think of these colors. There you go. But it's not color. Yours are two bears hugging. What's more festive than that? Christmas. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hey Man. I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. We're having a discussion about what festive is. <sighs> By the way, that's one of those words that the more I say, it doesn't sound like a real word. Festive? Yeah. We've said it so many times where I'm like, is that real? Yeah. I love it when that happens. I hate it when that happens. Yep. I did that the other day with wind. I was like, wind, 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 wind. And I said it like a million times by the like millionth time. I was like, that's not a word. Um, listen, everybody, first of all, let me get some business out of the way. First of all, I want to I thank everybody for coming out to the shows in Nashville. And just an overarching thank you. The energy that you guys bring to our shows. If I could tell you the discussions that I have in the green rooms um, after... Our weekend is over with the people who run our who run the places. How they talk about you guys, how cool you are, how amazing your energy is, the, how great laughers you are, how good you are to the wait staff. So let me just say thank you, thank you, thank you for all the amazing energy and everything that you guys bring to the live shows. Nashville was a litty, litty, yeah, Can it I was say litty, litty, sure, lit. You can just say lit. Yeah, Gordon Liddy, G Gordon Liddy. Do you know who G. Gordon Liddy is? Nope. Am I saying that right? Is it G. Gordon Liddy? Yeah, I can't believe I haven't said G. Gordon Liddy before, but I'm going to now for the rest of my life. You're going to forget like tomorrow nope. probably. Nope, I won't because just remembering it is G. Gordon Liddy. <laughs> okay. Um, so thank you all so much. Um, this weekend we're in Cincinnati Liberty Center. We are going to have to rent a car and drive from the airport just so you know. Oh, okay. Um, and then Springfield, Missouri, the weekend after that, after that. And the weekend after that, guys, the Gramercy Theater in New York. So excited about this show. Listen, if you are in the city or you want to, or, or you're outside the city, that's why we're doing it on Saturday. So you can catch the train in. Like I told you guys, you know, the way to support us is to come out to the shows. This show would be huge for me and Jacob. If you can come out, get your tickets now, April 13th. Um, Amazing. Can't wait to be at the Gramercy. All that being said, uh, the thing that I'm most excited about, guys, the podcasts we shot in Nashville yeah. are fucking fire. Amazing. They were so much fun. So, guys, we went into the new kind of like uh, us interviewing people about their childhood and, you know, how it affected their life and then how it affected them as parents. And we interviewed three completely different, all fucking alpha, powerful women. We interviewed Bunny. We interviewed Karen Fairchild from Little Big Town and Caroline Bryan. And it was amazing. And all three, you know what's interesting about all three women, dude? Yep. Is they were all incredibly open about different aspects yeah. of their lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It was really very interesting. I can't wait for you. You guys to hear it. We're flying to LA to do some more interviews right now. Uh, I don't want to ruin all the surprises, but I will tell you one. Um, maybe one of my best, not maybe, but one of my best friends in the world and somebody who taught me uh, more about life than, than I was expecting. I wasn't expecting that to come out of our friendship. Um, but Freddie Prince Jr. is, is um, going to come on. Um, Can't wait for that interview. Yo, dude. Um, he really did come into my life at a certain time where I needed exactly who he is. He's great. Great guy. Yeah. And uh, I cannot wait to talk to him and reconnect with him. Like, he is just my buddy. Yeah, man. he beat the shit out of me. Uh, in the boxing ring? Yeah. yeah, he was just sticking up for me. He, I fought him before you. Yeah, but he knew you were going to beat me up. So he peppered your face. Well, my favorite, my thing was, is like, I got a couple good licks in. And then when I saw the clock getting down to one, I put my hands down and turned around and he punched. Ugh. 
I turned around and he just went and just hit me right in the face. Yeah. You know, and I was like, yeah, that's, that's fair. There's also like a skill set to boxing, you know, when these guys spar, but not hitting each other hard, you know, <laughs> look at these, look at this form. <laughs> Zero form. Um, uh, anyways, that is the, the basic of the, uh, the work for now. Yeah. I'm speeding through this because I really want to get to Diddy. Yeah. Yo, dude. Diddy is in a little bit of trouble. Dude, it, it, there's just like, I feel like it, it went from zero to a hundred so fast. Like three or four months ago, they were talking about, you know, the sexual assault case and him and his, his crew. And then it kind of not disappeared from the media, but it was, it wasn't first on the list yeah. every day. And then all of a sudden it was like sex trafficking charge. And then his houses got raided. And it was like, dude, now it is it is so much more than I could have ever expected. Can I tell you the two things that tell me that don't scream to me that he's innocent? One, disappearing. Yeah. Okay. Two, his lawyer did not deny any of the charges. All the lawyer said was, it seems excessive, the military style raids. Yeah. That's all. The, the only thing the lawyer commented on was the was the raid. Yeah, he didn't he didn't want to say in any point in time in that statement that my client is innocent. Yeah, that was interesting to me too. And, yeah, and, and I will say this, man. I know people get surprised. They're like, I'm so surprised whenever this comes out with celebrities. Are you, why? Why? God, why are you surprised? Let me what, let me tell you what you know about them. Nothing. You know what they curate and what they want. Any public person. Yeah. You know what that public person wants you to know. A hundred percent. That's it. You know, you know the persona they post online. You don't know who they truly are as people behind closed doors. I would say this also, man. Yo, just be and and I've I've read a bunch of people coming out to and did he help me and he gave this to my family and all this stuff. They they aren't mutually exclusive. No, but he, also he could still be a dude who helps people out or reaches back or goes into the old neighborhood and donates money. This all can be true. It's not mutually exclusive. Just because you're a sex trafficker doesn't mean that you also don't help family. I'm not saying he's alleged, but just because you're an alleged sex trafficker doesn't mean you also I'm sure Jeffrey Epstein donated some money to charities. Do you know what I mean? That doesn't matter what. It doesn't cover the fact. It doesn't cover your track. That's that's right. That's, that's the right. thing. It's like just because you see those nice things on top doesn't mean you don't know the skeletons in the closet type shit. Every dude. Every, everybody's got skeletons. Everybody. I, you know, I, I sometimes I'm flattered by people talking about, you know, how they think I was or am as a father. But. I am also, it gets me that sometimes they're talking to me like, oh, I've never made mistakes or fucked up as a father or as a husband or, or gone off on a customer service person yeah. or I'm a heavily flawed person. You're a person. You're just a human. Yeah, That's man. It. I look back on my life and there are a ton of things that I would do different, except Same. the fact that they all led me to this point right now. Right where I feel better than I ever have. Yeah. I mean, that's so. the thing. Like, that's why I got so invested in Deepak Chopra. And that's why I have, you know, two of his quotes. I have this, this is the law of detachment. No, it's law number six. And then I just have another quote, my very first tattoo. Uh, the, there's another, the law of detachment also for, you know, explains in it. If you can accept, like, you may not like all the choices you've made in your past. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But if you can accept that those choices were made, those events happened, but that, it led you to this spot in your life right now, you can be eternally happy. Yeah, I agree with that. So the, that's why I got this law of yeah. detachment. It's it's super important for me to know, like, yeah, I've made mistakes. Uh, but one it, of the mistakes was the size of that tattoo. Dog. <laughs> Not my choice. Not my choice. I told you this story, Yo, right? dude, that's like your entire... <laughs> Bro, entire... I told the dude I wanted it this size. I told him this. When he placed the stencil, and I was like, hey, man, can you go smaller? And you know what he said to me? Uh, he said, the letters are going to bleed together. I Like, we shouldn't go any smaller. But... Like, because his hands shake? Yes. Oh, that was the problem. Yeah. When, he, dude, when he handed me the stencil, it was like this. But I had already had the deposit down for two weeks. Did you tell him, listen, I normally wouldn't say this, but take a shot of tequila. Something. Yeah. You got to go smoke a down. cigarette. You got to take a drink. Cool. But like... Settle it down. Yeah, baby. yeah, yeah. Settle it down. But I was also like, ugh, I had that deposit down for two weeks. I was in New Mexico. Okay. 
Let me ask you this. Let's get back to it for a second. So did he? I am. I am. I think I remember. Uh, and Matt reminded us that Cat Williams kind of predicted this like 30 days ago, right? Or three months ago or something or three like that. Three months so, ago. So something crazy. I I truthfully didn't I didn't see that clip. I saw a different clip and it was like Diddy in like either like 97 or 2000, somewhere in that area. And it's him getting on a PJ. But it's almost like he's predicting his downfall and what's gonna happen. Like he was saying like his pass is gonna come up and this and that and like you know, they're always going to come for the big dog when I'm at my peak type shit. And then this kind of shit happens. I haven't seen the Cat Williams clip personally. Yeah. So I, I have no idea what Cat said. Also, the Cat, I've seen, the only Cat Williams clips I've seen are those Shannon Sharp videos. Which were amazing. Amazing. Um, but like, it, I, don't, I don't hear a ton of his contemporaries coming to his defense. Eight. No, everyone. Do you? No, it's more just like everyone's like, you guys are ridiculous. Like, these are false accusations. They're money chasing. Who's saying that? His people, like his, like his, his team, his lawyers, his not. His team. Yeah. I'm talking about his contemporaries, dude. So, uh, sorry, define contemporaries. Like the people who, his, the other rappers, the other yeah, yeah, people yeah. in mu the music business who uh, came up with him, who know him. Yeah. There's nobody going, nah, dude, this isn't Diddy. Th that's the thing, man. I go back to like Alex Rodriguez. Yeah. When he was suing the league or suing the Yankees or or when he when when all the PED stuff was coming. Yeah. There was nobody who was like who was standing up for Alex Rodriguez, which told me that nobody liked him. No. no and no and nobody wanted to go on record because they knew it was true. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. And also like, you know, we talked about you already said how like people have come out and said, oh, did he do this for me? Did he do this for me? Why are we only hearing about it now? Why did I never hear about it when it happened? And why am I... What do you mean? Like, there's this, like a lot of things on social media and it happens a lot, like I think in my generation, is people have to film themselves doing a good deed. Uh -huh. Like, so you see those videos of like some just woman or like kid who's like, you know what? I just decided today that I'm going to give this person the money in my wallet or the food that I'm eating. And it's like, they have to film it because they have to show people, like they have this, they have this thought that like, other people have to see that I'm a good person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Other yeah. people have to see this or I need people to see this so people think that I'm a good person. I've never thought about that. Like I, anytime I have cash, homeless person, if I can ever buy someone a, a meal, I will. If I ever go into a gas station or 7-Eleven, especially when I, we were in LA, if I saw a homeless dude or a homeless woman out front, I go, are you more hungry or thirsty? And if they said one of them, I would get them a water, a giant water right. and like some chips or something. But if they ever said, I just want money, I wouldn't get them anything just because I knew what it was going to. But it's not something I ever had to document or show people because it's 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 what you do behind closed doors that make you who you are, right? Right? Yes. So it's it's what you do when no one's looking. We I had never heard about Diddy doing anything nice for anybody ever. Do you know what I mean? Like, and yeah, I, but for me, and of course, it's not to say that he's you know not not doing that for his people, but to see that only come up when this accusation hits. It, it just seems a little far-fetched. It might have... Listen, dude, there's no way he's got that much money and he hasn't been given yeah. stuff away. And maybe they were documented, dude, but if you're not looking for it, you're not going to see that Diddy gave $10,000. Like, yeah, or, I guess that's you true. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Not only that, and I will say this about the charity stuff, that I do agree, except, like, we're working with the NPHY right now, the Nevada Partnership for Homeless Youth. Oh, love it. And... She specifically asked, please post on social media. Th because you more than the money or stuff that you're donating. It's eyes. Yeah, you're making it oh, yeah, right, right. Right. So so I I agree with you. Yes, my instinct is not to show people that I give because that's not why I give. But the people you're giving to sometimes that that I understand. Yeah. That I understand. Yeah. But like the the thing that we saw pop up, it's like it's like a close friend of Diddy, right? Like yeah. when I go to the shelter, even if they don't ask, of course I'm posting to make a video and it's not for people to see now, that I'm doing what I'm doing, but because I want eyes on those dogs who need to be safe. Who got adopted and you, are, you have three done for, that. I'm three, three for three. three. Yeah. I will tell you this about Diddy, much like Trump, I, I've heard whispers of shit for years, much like Cosby. Yeah. Right? I, I, you, we're in the business. Yeah. We, we've heard we, like, the the Diddy stuff or the Cosby stuff or how Kelly, the Trump stuff mm -hmm. on on um 
on his show. This, this is all stuff and how terrible they all are to people and especially to people who are below, who they perceive to be below, below them. them. Right. This is, to me, is the sign of a bad person. Yeah. No, because okay? yeah, you've always taught me to treat the CEO and the janitor with the same type of respect. We, that's the way you do it. People are people, right? Yeah. And so I, I, when you when I see you being mean to the people that you can be mean to, that just tells me who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I, my, Dude, did you see? My biggest pet peeve is when people are mean to servers. Yeah, I hate that. Uh, did you see the picture slash video of Diddy's drug mule? Huh? Yo, dude, his drug mule got busted. Wait, Young Miami? By what? I think because I was literally looking at something and there's a. No, it was a white guy named Brandon. Oh, hilarious. What the fuck? So there's there's a. Oh, Young Miami. She's, I'm going to say rapper, but I don't think she is. And it says Young Miami has been accused of transporting pink cocaine to Diddy in new court documents. Okay, now listen, this dude had some. Tell me there wasn't some. By the way. This is all somebody on the inside looking to get Diddy. This is where this info's coming. Right. Because they knew where this guy was. And he, listen to me very carefully, he was carrying drugs on his carry-on. And somehow they knew and were waiting for him at the airport mm. and checked his bag and found Coke. I think it was Coke and weed. Okay. Or X. Ecstasy and weed, or something. Okay. Um, <coughs> yeah, I was, gonna and, say, I was gonna say I thought I heard a cough coming. And he was out on twenty five hundred dollars. But but I, look, I'm gonna put pieces together without any actual facts. But if you listen to some of the accusations, some of the the homoerotic stuff, some of the gay stuff, right? But also, I've been hearing those rumors for years. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and you look at this dude. You got to pull up a picture of his drug mule. For sure, he's taken a load to the face before. This God. guy, dude, Pause. this dude takes a load before he gets on the plane with the drugs and after. Look, are you telling me this guy isn't shook? Can you bring up a picture of this dude? Oh, he's been. Oh, my God. He has been slapped in the face with a dick against his will. That guy. That You know, he's been slapping in the face by a dick. That's what those cuts on his eyebrows Come are. Come on, dude. This dude? Are you telling me he hasn't been abused? You know, they make him keys to the drugs and he doesn't even have to. Dude. Uh, they, they, he, was a for, <laughs> he was a former uh, college basketball player. Yeah. Syracuse. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. You know, you know what he is now? A dude who takes loads to the face for drugs. <laughs> yeah, I'm also going to say... Look at his face. He looks no, so shook. A hundred percent. And I will say, so he's probably switching sports. He's no longer a point guard. He's a wide receiver. Dude, he is not, he's not a tight end anymore. No. I, look, look, look. Oh, rough. come on, dude. Rough. He didn't used to have a dimple on his chin. That is where the, that's where the, that's where the jizz just kind of gathers right there at the chin. Look. At this dude. Dude, he's got a little cup holder for it on his chin. What? Like, you see the little dent in it? Is that, I, I thought you, oh, you I said dimple. I just finished on his chin. I just oh. finished saying that. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. And when you said dimple, I always think of right here, but he doesn't have dimples on no, his chin. No, he has a dimple on his chin. But this, to me, is uh, amazing because he clearly, does that look like a confident? No. 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 Dude, he's been... Yo, you know, Dude, you know he's, not, he he's not he's not confident because he's been hiding in the closet for 25 years. I don't know if he is gay. I just think that But didn't he, we just say we're piecing together things without actual facts? He, yeah, but here's what here's what I'm thinking. I don't think he's gay. I think he's been abused. He looks like a dude who has just straight up been abused. Yeah, well, that's what it says. That first line right there. It says, Mr. Paul was named in a lawsuit filed in February by music producer Rodney Jones who alleged that Combs sexually assaulted no. him and forced him to have sex. Oh, is that for yeah, Mr. Paul? For, that's from Rodney Jones. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And so, yeah, yeah, that's why I'm saying. But listen, dude, this dude, a lot of times, it's just a power thing. What can I get yeah. this person to do? Yeah. And old Brandon Paul, it seems like he might have, you know what he looks like? He looks like, like, you know, the type of dude who you'd be like, Brandon, get in the kitchen. <laughs> and he'd come in the kitchen and you'd you'd have made like a like a turkey sandwich and you'd just slap him in the face with a turkey sandwich. He, he, looks, like, he looks like that kind of He dude. looks like the kind of dude who washes dishes with an apron on. Oh, and nothing else. Yeah. Or yeah. like like apron and the rubber gloves. Do you know what I mean? Like Yeah, listen, I I think they make him probably walk around in Barbie slippers. 
Yeah, this 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 this, 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 this is this combo is this, just not nope. Yeah, nope. You know what my favorite part about all this though is? Is 50 Cent fucking him up online. 50 Cent trolling Diddy online with I, all this shit is the funniest how thing. Does he troll him? Bro, I'm gonna go to 50's I, I, Instagram. It's By like way, 50 is ruthless. Oh, uh, ruthless. I loved it. My favorite one was when he went back and forth with uh during the ice bucket challenge with Floyd Mayweather. And he was like, man, fuck the ice bucket. He was like, if you can read a full page of the Cat in the Hat book, I'll give $100,000 to whatever charity you want. Yeah. And why the accent just now? Because that's how he said it. <laughs> I'm just, why the accent? Yeah, you, I would, next time you tell that story, I would do it sans accent. That's one man's opinion. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, so, so 50 posted this video um, of, of uh, Diddy's neighbor driving out of his neighborhood but apparently Diddy's neighbor is claiming that Diddy brings minors into his house by the bus load late at night and so it's just 50 posting he posted the drug mule thing too mm -hmm. like it, he's just it, he's he's on Jay-Z's ass right now like yeah, but dude you're not telling me anything that he's putting out there you're just telling me that he's so tell me what he's on Jay-Z's ass he, he's, tell me what he's there's one he, he posted a picture of Jay-Z or the missing picture on a milk carton because no one's heard from Jay since all this happened he stopped answering the phone he was saying are Jay-Z and Diddy their buddies I think so okay well because they've been in the game for a long time together okay. and grew up with that but like so it, it's just 50 being 50 do you know what I mean? And I love it that he's just taking to social media to do whatever he can to just kind of yeah, put he Diddy on blast. Yeah, he always people, man. Yeah, Diddy, or uh, 50 is one of the funnier dudes yeah, online. He, he really doesn't care. And I know that he, I love his back and forth with Ja Rule. That shit makes me laugh. Yeah. Dude, he goes, he goes I in just, on Ja. I, oh. Well, yeah, I just don't get why Ja, I, why is Ja even trying? My favorite thing 50 did is 50 bought all the tickets for a Ja Rule show, he bought like 2,000 tickets just to have nobody show up and have the first like five rows be empty. Yo, dude, that it's is the, so funny. The funniest thing. Like he's, he was like, fuck it. I got enough money. I'm going to like, I'm just going to say, make it look like it's sold out for the show and there's yeah. nobody in the first six rows. I was like, that's the funniest thing. It's I, petty. It's I, petty, but it's so funny. To I me. have like, to tell you, I might do that as a practical joke to one of my friends, but not petty, just funny. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, 50 and Ja, had, or like he was doing it for different reasons. Yeah, but like, dude. It's you know, so funny to what's me. What's funnier, if we buy out a section and have it be empty or put cardboard cutouts of like celebrities? I think having, I think having it be empty is way funnier. Yeah, I mean, we could have it. We could have like cardboard cutouts of like celebrities, like they're dressed like they're at the Oscars and just have them sitting down. I think that's pretty funny. Or but, we could, or we could... If you want to go a little extra, we could buy like a section, but then have like a makeup team, like an F FX team. I am make, one, make those people actually look like those celebrities. I am 100% going to do this. I think empty is the way to go. I think you're right. I'm going to look at, I, I'm not going to tell you all on here who I'm going to do it to. And let me look at their schedule. I already know who I'm doing it to. Really? Yo, fuck yeah. That sounds like a ton of fun. I think I know who you're doing it to. Yeah, I, I, I. I might even, I won't buy out the whole club, but I'll buy out half of it. Or, but like what 50 was like the, it's gotta be the front. It was, yeah, it was a huge section in the front. Yeah. Gotta be the front. Yeah. Super funny to me. Okay. So tell me how you think, like this dude is in the Caribbean. Wait a, wait a second before I go any further. Caribbean or Caribbean? Caribbean. I think you can do both, right? Caribbean. I think you, like, here's the funny, I say Caribbean, but then I say Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Like, that's the only time I say Caribbean is for that title of the movie. Every time else I say Caribbean. I will. Yeah. But I, so this is my thing with Diddy. So like, obviously, like right now, Diddy's in the wind. Nobody has. And so that's what we that's what we know. So the last video reported of Diddy is March 25th, which is two days ago. As his homes were being raided, he was he was videotaped at the Miami airport pacing around the parking lot. After that, Diddy hasn't been seen. Is that right? Oh, I thought he was in Miami. He was in Miami right before the raids, but then took off on his PJ. Yeah, but they should be able to track a jet. Well, they can't. So th it's crazy. Ready for this? There's a guy on Twitter or X or whatever the fuck you want to call it. His name is Jack Sweeney. He's the guy who tracks all the famous people's private jets to see where they're going, uh, how much, you know, carbon emission, that whole shit. They're ruining the planet. 
Like, for example, he tracked Kylie Jenner flying from LA to San Fran for a coffee and then flying back to LA. No fucking way. Swear to God. Why? Why? I guess she has a coffee spot she likes in San Fran. Okay. But pointless. That is yeah. a pointless flight. I, th I think so, too. I would have sent somebody up to get the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why am I getting out of Fact. place? But so, yeah, listen, as long as I got a PJ and someone's going, what? why do I have to be that person? I agree. But so, this guy, what I'm he does- I'm sending old Brandon come on the chin Allen or whatever his name is. I'm sending Facts. him up there to get that for me. But so, this is what this dude does, is he tracks these people's jets. He, they call him a serial jet tracker, which I think is hilarious. But yeah. So, he, on the 25th, about three hours after that video of Diddy recorded at the Miami airport, this tweet was put out. Diddy's jet N1969C flew to the Caribbean island of Antigua amid the trafficking, trafficking investigation of him. But various sources confirm that the rapper was not on board. But no one has seen him since. Which, His which, jet's there, but he's not? Bullshit. Nah. There's, you're telling me. Why would he fly the jet there? Why would he fly the jet there unless, now I'm thinking about it, unless he had a second jet that nobody knows about that's not his main jet and he took it somewhere else. Nah. To, it just seems like a lot of effort for him to do that. Do you know what I mean? But so right now, Diddy's in the fucking wind. Like, no one has any idea where he is. They have no idea what's going on. His house is in LA and Miami raided. His kids who were there were put in handcuffs. But they got taken out of cuffs. Yes, they got taken out of cuffs yeah. after they raided the house. But like, yeah, I mean, military-style force, I think, is needed, especially if there's a sex trafficking charge. Well, like, yeah. Military-style force raid sounds like the only way to do it, in my opinion. You also, you don't know who's in there. You don't know yeah, What's, who's I, got I what. I think you come in uh, with a show of force. I think I don't think you come in and kind of be like, pardon me. Yeah. I don't want to wake anyone up if they're napping, but we heard there might be some sex trafficking. Yeah. Pardon me. We've been trying to. You got your car's extended warranty. Exactly. Like, it's like you can't come in with that. Yeah. And plus, we want to talk to you about some student loan forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, it just, like, it just is crazy to me to see the lawyers come out and be like, yeah, the raid was, it was unnecessary, the force that they used. But I'm not denying that. Very telling. Yeah. It shows a Very lot. Telling. It shows a lot. Like, it, it I, 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 I'm I, not surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised about, like you said, it. like you can't be surprised because you yeah. don't know what skeletons they have in the closet. I'm not surprised about this shit. I'll tell you what always surprises me is people coming to the de the defense of celebrities they like. Like you know them. Like That's they're your friends. So like they know your name. It's, yo, if you took, let's give, give the biggest example ever. If you took the name Michael Jackson away and I just told you, hey, some rich dude built an amusement park and in a his, zoo. In his backyard. In his backyard and invites children over. Yeah. And they spend the night in his room behind two locked doors. Yeah. You would be like, hey, let's go get that dude. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And, so, and I, I would say the same thing with all, like, you just go come to the defense of somebody you don't know. That's the craziest part. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's. Like when I when I hear when I see people defend, you know, Chris Brown. When I saw people like defend Trevor ba Bauer before they knew what the deal was, and uh, he's been exonerated. Thank but, God. But yeah, but it's but still, man, you're defending people, and maybe that Trevor Bauer wasn't a great example because he did. But Trevor Bauer was completely innocent. But you can't is either way. But you saw people jump to one hundred percent conclusions, right? One hundred percent. So. You can't jump to conclusions either way, innocent or guilt, until yeah. you know. It's I like I I hate that saying innocent until proven guilty because sometimes facts come out and it's like. But I will say, I mean, I'm not jumping to conclusions, but him flying and disappearing and his lawyer not denying it, and, and no social media presence, no anything for the last two days, and one of the people in the civil cases apparently has got some receipts. Ooh. This is why it would explain if in the civil case they have receipts and it's for trafficking, right? They're coming for you. A hundred percent they are. They're coming for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so yeah, I, I just think like all this shit is just like it 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 went from zero to a hundred, I think, so fast. I think it I think behind closed doors has probably been at a hundred for a month or so. I mean, absolutely. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All absolutely. right. All right. Well, that was 
that's interesting for us. Yo, I got one more thing, actually. My, uh, Iman and I, my girlfriend, were talking about yep. it last night. She was like, yo, have you seen this video about this 19-year-old? And I was like, what do you mean? And she just shows me the first clip of the police cam footage. Sorry. And the police cam footage is like this cop going up to this kid. And he's like, hey, your parents are a little concerned about something they found in your closet? And he was like, yeah. And I go, what is it? He goes, a human head and hands. And I was like, what? what? Okay. So there's a 19-year-old. I maybe I'll, I'll try to find the article after I'm done explaining it. Matt, can you try to find the article? It, it, it's it's pretty large in the news right now. Okay, 19 year old. His mom calls the cops because she goes into his bedroom and finds three two trash bags in his closet. One has a decapitated human head. Okay. The other has the same person's arms. Okay. Or, arms. Arms. Okay. So obviously body mutilation. Like that's what that is. But so, dude, it's so far. Past. It's not just it's, well, body mutilation. It's murder. Well, then mutilating the body and then keeping it. Yeah. So, so I was watching this and it was just like this kid explaining. Yes. Here we go. Brian Cohey. Yep. So his mom calls the cops and is like, hey, I just found a human head in a trash bag. In can, my son's room. Can you imagine, though? She's probably in there like, ah, oh, this dude with his dirty laundry. No, dude. The, the smell of a oh, dead you're body? Right. probably right. You're probably right. She was yeah, probably yeah. looking for a dead animal. Yeah, yeah. Like, Confess the killing and dismembering? Yeah, dude. So on his computer were, dude, he was searching up, like, how to get away with a homicide, but also how to get rid of homicidal tendencies as a 19-year-old. Like, he was constantly, constantly trying to, to get rid of these thoughts and trying to figure out what was going on in his brain. Wait, this this just happened. Just happened. But but he also was, oh, was sentenced in 2021? Maybe it just showed up. Like, I didn't hear about... Okay, maybe it was 2021. But this is something that literally, like, it is just hitting, like, for me, I see all the kind of weird murder shit on my TikTok. Yeah. This, right, this is the clip that I saw where I was like, whoa. And so, a human head and hands. Sorry, not arms, just hands. But so, this dude is like, his mom calls and is like, hey, I got this. He just pulled up back to the house and I need y'all to come, please, because I need y'all to see like what is happening. And so he had just come from a girl's house. They were hanging out. And after that, they interviewed the girl and she said- The girl? There was a, like a, anonymous, but he was hanging out with her. It's where when okay. he pulled up to the house when this call was made and like this was, this footage was, you know, this whole thing. He- the, they went and interviewed the girl that he was hanging out with yeah. or just like talking to. And and she said, I'm kind of shocked he only killed one person. I thought one day he was just going to go crazy and shoot up a school. And I was like, what? Like, oh, oh, this this is the... Can we hear that? This is, is that possible? This is the 911 call. 911 call? This is the 911 call. Yeah, it's it's it looks like a shorter version of it. Perfect. But, but like... That's all we need. Yeah, well, I started from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Parents have some concerns of some stuff they may have found in your room? Yeah, I believe so. And w what would it be? A human head and hands. Now, one is John. It's address emergency. Hi, there is an emergency. I found, found something in my son's closet wrapped in a plastic bag. Okay, what was it? I think it's a human head. It's a what? I think it's a human head. Parents have some concerns of some Yo, stuff they may have found in your room? Yo, first of all, I got a couple of things. A hundred percent that kid needs to be in jail for the casualness in which he said human head and hands. Yeah. He, he doesn't not look like the dude who shot John Lennon and the dude who shot Reagan. He's like a combination of those two dudes. Yeah, he does look 40 when he's 19, which I think is Why weird. do they all have the Dahmer type glasses and the Dahmer type face? Yeah. It's very Dahmery, very cherubic. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Dahmer was less cherubic, but like a cherubic round. Yeah. No facial hair. Oh, found guilty of first degree in 2023. Yeah. So that's why it's up right now. But I will tell you, man, as a parent, you know, you expect maybe to find a jizz rag or a bong or like worse comes to worse, you know, some illicit drugs. Dude, if I found a human... And here what's funny. I think, did she say, I think I found something bad? You, It was a human head. And she said, I think it's when, a human head. How do you not know what it what is? What else could it be? Yeah. 
But also, like, but why? Let's just for a second. Why the head? Oh, the hands for identification for fingerprints. Correct. And Fingernails, the head for tooth. Teeth. Yep. How long? I wonder how long was in and yeah, dude. This 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 the casualness of the sociopath always fucks me up. It's insane. And I, I I had to relearn the definitions today of psycho psychopath versus socio. Yeah. Sociopaths are the ones that just don't feel emotion at all. Yeah. And psychopaths have emotional outbursts every yep. now and then for yep. what they're feeling. Sociopath. Sociopath. This that is man. insane. Yeah. Like, so all of his stuff online and like, he didn't write manifestos or anything like that, but he had so much research done on what he wanted to do. His choice was, I'm either going to kill a sex worker or a homeless person. Because mm -hmm. unfortunately in our society, those are two people when they go missing, people don't look for them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So it's one that for him, he's like, I can easily get away with this. Yep. And so there was a shop in the town that he lives where a woman would let a homeless man come in and read a book and just like have shelter for the day and then leave when she closed. So he knew that that dude, 69 year old Warren Barnes was there every day. And so the night Warren left that shop, dude pulled up or, or saw him sleep. Sorry. Saw him sleeping outside of the shop in a sleeping bag walked up, repeatedly stabbed him in the neck multiple times, and then took his body and took it with him to then keep the head. Keep How the do you hands. know this? Because I saw all the... There's so much more than just this. Oh, and where, so where did he put the body? Okay, ready for this? A couple days, or a day or two after this happened, police pull up and find him in his car in the middle of a lake. He had lost control and... And just kind of this dude, the psycho, the psycho uh -huh. had accidentally like driven into a lake, lost control. And his mom was like, oh, he's a bad driver. And they all kind of laughed about it. But at that same scene, why? Because he was trying to dispose of the body in the lake at that same scene in the road from his accident. They're seeing human severed human arms, three, three different pieces. One arm was cut in half and there were two pieces laying around and the other one fully cut. And they were just laying in the road near his car. There were mysterious red marks on the outside of his vehicle. And cops just didn't even fucking think about it. So he got away with, like, when they found him in the car in the lake, the body was just disposed of. It's crazy. And then to come back and to see this however much, you know, however long later. Like 5.3 million views on that. And I'm sure dude, that's only the that's only the 25 second one. I've, I've went, like, Iman and I went through, like, six different four minute videos of interrogations, of interviews, his mom, him. Like, it was crazy, too, because he... He even said, he was like, yeah, I figured killing this person, like, I'm probably only going to do 15 years. And I was like, 15 years? Dog, premeditated. You had you searched up all this shit on your computer. How to dispose, how to get rid of homicidal tendencies, how to do this, how to do that. Wait, he wants to get rid of the homicidal tendencies? He was looking up online how to get rid of homicidal tendencies because he said he had wanted to kill somebody for a long time. And he wanted to, he was trying to figure out how to get rid of how he was feeling. And I guess what he, the conclusion he came to was, I just got to do it. Yeah. And so... That's what happened. But he was like 15 years. And I'm like, dude, here's my thing. I'm not a criminal. But if I was, you, you did your research. Cool. You got to still be smarter. He, he, was, he also knew the, the rule of three thumb, which is rigor mortis, right? Yeah. So after, after you know, three hours, something with the body happens. After three days, the body starts to smell. Or, and then after like three weeks, something else happens, right? It's a rule of three that yeah. serial killers go by for uh, disposing of bodies. Huh. But... If you're going to do all that research and you apparently know your rigor mortis, how are you not going to know that that head and hand are going to smell like ass? Like, yeah. Dude. Like, like I've, you've seen dead animals. You've smelled that dead meat yeah. before. It is a rancid smell. It is one of the worst things oh, yeah. on this planet. Terrible. So, I, like, I'm not trying to, I'm glad he got caught. Don't get me wrong. But it's like, yeah, well, I mean, it, you got to be, like, come on. Like, how, like, why? I feel like criminals nowadays are just getting really dumb. I, 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 don't think I would have put the head in my, my closet. closet. I think I might have left it. He looks like he lives pretty rural. Yeah. I might have left it out in the woods. Buried let, it somewhere. You know, or just let the animals eat it. They'd have come and eaten it. Yeah. And then I'd just go get that clean clean skull, and I would donate it to, like, a, you know where I would put it? Like donating your body to science? I know. I would give it, to, you know, you could sell it to, like, a pawn shop. You know, they like that. I would clean it up good. I'd yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. I found this skull in the woods. Yeah, so yeah, Take yeah. this skull. Take this human skull? No. If I said, if Don't I. Don't they sell human skulls at the pawn shop? Not, no. And also, if. <laughs> here, hear me out. I'm going to ask you a question. If you were the guy at the pawn shop and yeah. I walked in and said, hey, I found this human yeah, skull in right. the woods, I'd like to sell it. You wouldn't be like, police. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Like, there's, you're right. you can't go to anybody with yeah. that. 
All right, so, so I would I would I would either bury it or bury it. Yeah. Or burn it. Yeah, yeah, this is like it, it just there's a lot of dumb. Yes. Like I you can't you. you can't do that much research and still fuck it up. I would That's not, crazy to I me. would be a terrible murderer. Me too. I, I first of all all the blood I can't do it. But like I yeah that would be a terrible murder. It, it just doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't appeal to me at all. No. 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 I, I'm okay I, with I, blood. Like I, it's not a problem for me. If I was gonna pick, a, if I was gonna be a criminal, any type of criminal, and I had to pick one, mm -hmm. you know what one I like? Is international identity fraud. International art thief. Yeah, but that's like. Yo, what are you talking about, dude? No, that honestly, absolutely, I 100 percent get it. But that's just not something you just randomly get into. Well, I mean, you don't randomly get into murdering people and take putting their heads in their closet. I either. mean, apparently he did. He didn't randomly. He researched it. I, I mean, mean, I guess that's true. I'm just saying, if I was going to be one criminal, I like international art thief. It feels very James Bond. It feels like I'm stealing from the rich. Which Not I, James Bond, Robin Hood. Okay. James Bond didn't steal art. No, he didn't, but I like it because it feels international. Like international super spy type yeah, shit. Yeah, and I'd be wearing a tuxedo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would learn how to speak French. Did you? <laughs> and I would drive an Aston Martin. Did you see that? You see that video called Red Notice? Or not video, a uh, movie Red Notice on uh, oh, yeah. Netflix with yeah. The Rock and Ryan Reynolds? Yep. I like that movie. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Or the guy the from Ocean's 12, you know, the art thief. Who, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I think that seems doable for me. I would love to do that. Because then you can do some secret spy shit, and that sounds fun. Mission Impossible, secret bam, spy. Bam, 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 this bam. doesn't seem like fun. No. Also, it. I just feel like if sitting with that in your room or just like sitting with that weight on your shoulders, knowing you took another life, would drive me insane. Good. Like, it would drive me crazy. Good. Be if it didn't, you would be a sociopath. Case in point. This dude probably just got back from McDonald's, and they're like, hey, your Shh. mom found something. Yeah. I believe human so. Head, human head and hands. Hu casual. A casual human head and hands? Uh, Matt, will you play it again right, just right here from where it is? I just want to hear him say, yeah, I believe so, and then hear him say the, the rest of... Yeah, I believe so. And <laughs> what would it be? A human head and hands. Like, you know, I don't know, know what he switched I, tones. He went sinister. No, dude, they slowed it down. They slowed it down for the video. That I was about to say, that's amazing. How, there's no better way to make him sound demonic than to go... A human head and hands. Fucking nailed it. What's your emergency? Yeah, my emergency is my <laughs> my son's a fucking <laughs> psycho. My emergency that I think after he eats the cinnamon rolls I just made, he might come in here. <laughs> That's my emergency. I hated dinner. Yeah, like that is a rough. Song. Yeah, uh, that, yeah, it, it's crazy. But the fact that he just got convicted is kind of crazy. It took two years for them to convict that of first degree it's when it's so obvious yeah. that it was premeditated. That's the big one for first degree. That's like for me, the, or not for me, but for the judicial system, the biggest, the one turning point between first and second degree is premeditation. Right. Premeditation always puts you in that first degree slot, which is life without parole, nothing else. Do you know right. what I mean? Right. And so to see that right away and to see the searches and to see all that, that's a, that bang, case closed, trial's over. That's yeah. premeditation. That, that is... That's not how... There's nothing works quickly in the juice. I know, but it's premeditation. It's body mutilation. It's it's straight murder. Like, I, I feel like right there, three things, that's right on top. First degree, jail for life. What are we talking about? Why did it take two years for them to fucking do that? Yeah, trial? I wonder why it did take two years, but I'm sure he wasn't out walking around the community for two years. I'm sure no, he's he was in jail. He, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I feel like that... That well, I guess him and uh, Diddy's a uh, drug mule can be friends in prison. Yep, I don't think they're going to be in the same part of the jail. Yeah, probably. Not. I don't think so. Anyways, wow, these are two good stories. Yeah, thank, thank you for bringing those in yeah. with you. What else you got, man? Um, I went and saw Lee Syatt last night. Yeah, and by the way, Lee Syatt travels with us. Lee was um with us in Nashville. Joe Diaz is producer in the Church of What's Happening Now. Yep. Um, and so he does stand up and he travels with us and he's super funny. Ridiculously funny. So he was here in town. He went and saw him. He was at the LA Comedy Club at the Strat. My first time at the Strat last night. Okay. Um, yeah. was not, not bad, actually. Yeah. It was pretty you, clean. You for the club or the casino? Both. Yeah, it's fine, dude. Club was nice. Yeah. Uh, the casino itself, also pretty nice. Yeah. Pretty clean. Yep. Pretty quiet. Didn't smell a lot like smoke. Like, not bad. It's just in a... It's just off the Strat. And also in a dodgy part. Yeah, very. Like, bad. Lee was like, hey... 
So if I wanted to walk from the strat to the rest of the strip, I was like, no. No. He was like, what? I go, no. Do not walk around by yourself I, at night near the strat. I wouldn't even walk across the street at the strat. Yeah. I would walk on property. Yeah. But I wouldn't walk across the street over there. Yeah. And he was like, oh, really? I go, yeah, it's not. Uh, anybody in Vegas knows that you just That's don't, you don't walk around out there nah, by yourself. Not worth it. No, no, no. He was like, so Uber. I was like, Uber. And he was like, what about from like casino to casino? I go, cabs. Cabs are always the easiest way to just kind of go. When he's on the strip, he could, he could casino, casino, right, right, right. walk it. But he, he's got those tiny yeah. little legs. That's going to be like a, a f it's going to be like a four hour walk for him to get some. Dude, if he wanted to next. walk from the strat to the rest of the strip, I was like, I'm like, dude, two weeks. At least. With those tiny little legs, dude. And those little sketchers. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. So when saw Lee last night, uh, he was uh, featuring for a comic named Nick Nick Guerra. Yep. Um, who I met Nick. He's a super nice guy, super funny. Um, but you know, I was there and I, I saw Brett Ernst as well. Um, I've known Brett for so long. Good dude. Um, saw a couple other like locals that I've met before. Um, we all smoked a little bit, hung out, shot the shit, you know. Um, but I was talking with this dude, comic named Michael Robertson. Uh, a nice dude. I think he's one of like in in that like circle of the dudes that we know got the most years in this and also I think the oldest mm -hmm. and so we sat after the show and we smoked a joint and just kind of shot the shit a little bit and I, I don't know why it really like it not affected me but I guess affected is the right word that conversation I had with Mike last night was really like I guess eye opening because like look when you and I have those conversations like you're you're talking like I, you're like it's just me and you. I'm, I know what you're talking about as far as conversation. I was about to explain okay, okay, the okay. conversations yep, yep. that we have. Right. Okay, sorry you just about that. Let me keep going. That okay, would be awesome. All right. <laughs> so the conversations that you and I have are like, do you really want this? Sometimes I or not. Sometimes I don't like doing what is considered the boring work at home behind the scenes. I love doing what we consider not the easy part, but the easiest part of the job, which is going on the road. It's on the, the fun week. part. Correct. Yeah talking to him last night and he was like, I don't want you to think like, because he's 36 and he goes, I don't want you to think like I'm trying to give you advice that you haven't heard or you don't have to take it if you don't want. I was like, dude, you've been on this planet for a decade longer than me. You have six more years in this game than I do. I'm open to all of this kind of info and all of this kind of tips, whatever you got for me, I'm here to listen. When you and I have those conversations, obviously I'm listening to you, but I think there's part of me where he's like, it's my dad. Like, you know, it's a parent. I'm hearing this shit. I've heard this shit. It's like, I'm listening. But, you know, whatever comes after it is just like my choice. Mm -hmm. Sitting and having this conversation with this dude last night, we just kind of talked about what he's doing, what he wants to do, his goals. And before he got out of my car, he said something to me. He goes, look, this comedy is so much fun. I love the people I meet. He was born and raised in Vegas. He knows this town. It's his city. He was like, at the end of the day, I want to feed my family. He was like, I, you know, I, I, I don't like the money's cool and like meeting the people and the lifestyle. Sure. If it comes, whatever. He was like, but I'm here for the legacy. He goes, I'm here to when people talk about Mount Rushmore and talk about the greats and talk about who left their mark on this world. I want my name to be a part of that conversation. Mm -hmm. And for me, like, I don't know if I've really hit that part of my comedy career yet because I'm still so new to it. I'll be literally a year in this weekend in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And so like on the dot a year, the 31st. Mm -hmm. So for me, it, it's just a mentality I had never had before. I feel so many similarities in the way him and I kind of walk about the world and how we chat with people and just who we are as people. And so something extra really just resonated with me last night when talking to him. And I literally, I, I, I was writing down podcast topics, driving home, just typing shit out, like I, just really feeling inspired by this dude to, to get better. Because the big thing he said also that you always say to me that I'm like, yeah, it's just the dirty work because you record your sets. And I go, as much as I can, we usually have uh, a person there filming. And he looked, he took a puff of the joint. He looked at me, he goes, do you watch him back? And I go, not as much as I should. And he was like, you're not going to get any better. He's like, you're not going to know what you're doing wrong or what you need to do better or what you should be doing or shouldn't be doing. He was like, you're an athlete. I was like, yeah. He goes, you had to watch film to prepare for your teams you were playing every week. He goes, yeah. He goes, you isolated certain players you wanted to put more coverage on or this and that, this and that. I said, yeah. He goes, dude, you have to be able to prepare for everything, prepare for this comedy shit. If you have the opportunity to, you should be preparing to make yourself the best possible comic you can be, mm -hmm. which is doing the nitty gritty shit. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And, and look, obviously again, we've talked about it. I've heard you say it and I do listen to you when you say it. And I don't know what's come over me in the last 
two months. It was something I can't explain. But that conversation last night, I felt like really just. Here's what I want to say to you. In no judgment. Do you, in this life, do you want to feel like you did something great? Do you want to feel like you were great at something? Yes. Okay. Not, again, no judgment on what that is. But to be great, you have to make yourself uncomfortable. Yeah. And do things that you don't like. You don't do that in any aspect of your life. Yep. And so it's one of the reasons that I get you in the cryo. There is something about doing something that you don't like and enduring it. Mm-hmm. That has a true dopamine effect yeah. on you and your body. Yeah. In the gym, you have to push yourself to get gains, to be great, to look the way you want to look and feel the way you want to look. Yep. And in stand-up, yep. you, you have to do the parts that you don't like. Mm. And, and so, look, man, I told you this. If you had just been an employee or just been a dude I was taking on the road, I don't judge the people I take on the road by how they do on stage. What they do when... My, my judgment is this stage time, especially now, is so uh, special. Yeah. Especially the stage time that I'm offering. Because everybody brings their own openers now. Yeah. So features are fucked. Mm-hmm. And guys, when I say feature, I mean the person who goes on stage right before the headliner. Yeah. Features used to get booked like headliners and you would just show up and there'd be a headline. But now every headliner I know is bringing somebody. Mm-hmm. So you have a very coveted spot. Right. I, you know, and I would bring Stephen Randall mm-hmm. and I would bring Sandy Danto. Mm-hmm. And the reason I would bring these guys is because I know how much that stage time meant to them. Yeah. And I remember saying to an opener who doesn't travel with me anymore, hey, you got to do new material. If you're not going to do new material, I'm going to give this stage time to somebody who is trying to get better. Yeah. That's it. Are you, if you're not trying to get better and you're not using that stage in valuing it, then let me just find somebody who will. Yeah. Zero judgment. Yeah. What I never want to do is feel like I'm forcing you to, to do, do something, something I don't want to do. And I, I will say something. And by the way, we can, we can cut this Oof. out. We can cut this out of the podcast. I'm just saying to you, right? Somebody asked you the other day, and I forget, do you love it? Mm-hmm. And you said, yeah. But before you said, yeah, you looked down and to your left or right, one or the other, which is not the way you answer a question when you're being forthright. Eye contact, straightforward. There was something about the question that got you and like I said, dude, I have no doubt when we're out on the road, you love it. I love your energy. That's the fun part. Yeah. Right? Let's do the stuff. The work is to be done mm. when people can't see it. Yep. So. Yep. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really feel like, I don't, yeah, last night. But also something else happened. We were walking around the casino and a woman walked up to me and I could, you know, we always can kind of see it coming. And I was expecting, hey, are you Joshua's son? Because earlier in the day at Chipotle, there was a dude who was serving me. And he goes, hey, are you that one comedian, son? And I was like, yeah, I'm Jacob Wolf. Nice to meet you. And then he said, what's your dad's name again? And I, I was that. like, I was like, dude, if you're going to say something, know one of our names. Yeah. Like, get, <laughs> get some of the facts, right? And what he said next killed me. I go, yeah, his name's Josh Wolf. He goes, yeah, not going to lie. He's funny sometimes. I was like, sometimes. He goes, do you think so? I go, I fucking hope so. Like, yeah. And it made me giggle. But and she came That up, was the backwards compliment. A hundred percent. She, and then a woman came up to me in the casino and she said to me, hey, are you Jacob Wolf? And I was like, I love that. Yes, that's the one. FaceTime both her kids. She was like, my kids are huge fans. Can I tell you this? Yeah. I know you want to step out from the shadow. Yeah, I, I have it written right here. Then start making content that is separate from the two of us. Yep. The reason you're Josh Wolf's son is because the only content you post that is Entertainment is us. Is either this podcast or clips that I send to you from our stand up together. Right. You want to be not us and have your own? You got to start. Yep. Yeah. 100%. Okay. 100%. I, yeah. Last night for me, I was driving home and I was like, 
I wrote the first thing I wrote down. I said, I'm about to get all my shit. Yeah, dude. All I can tell you is write a list, write a list, mm -hmm. write a list. Yep. Every, every night before you go to sleep or every morning when you wake up, before you get on your phone, if I were you, I would set a very, what time do you get up in the morning? Depends. I would set what every time you get up, the first two hours of the day, no phone. There's no reason for you to check TikTok when you wake up. Who the fuck cares? There's no reason to check Instagram. Two hours, you wake up, you get your head together. That's that right there. That's like starting your day off with a donut. It's sugar. Right. Get your shit together. Whether it's working out, whether it's just talking to your girlfriend, whether it's meditating, whether it's writing, whether it's looking at sets. Get your fucking shit together mm -hmm. before you start poisoning your brain with the swipe, constant swipe. Yep. Okay. Yep. And a list, whether it's the night before or day of, the list holds you accountable, man. Mm -hmm. If you go a week making a list and you look at that list every day and you haven't checked a fucking thing off, you're like, what am I doing with my day? Yeah. What did I do? Right? Right. I'm sure you go through days like I do where you're like, is it the end of the day? What the fuck did I do today? <laughs> that does happen. Right? That does happen. And it doesn't help that we're always, we're at least 25 minutes away from anything. So it's, a, yeah, you get in the car to go do something. It's two hours. Yeah. You're, you're making an excursion out of it for sure. The first two hours of your waking day, that phone should not be in the equation right now, dude. It's about habits and getting your mind right. You know, when we're on the road together, dude, it highlights to me how much you're on there a lot. Yeah. Looking at other people's lives. Live yours, dude. Yeah, you're right. Live yours. Yeah. I, I want to tell you, these are hard conversations for me because I'm. it blurs the line of employee, like, now, I don't even say employee because we're in this together. Yeah. But it blurs the line. Of for partner. Me. Yeah, I know. Partner. And I. it's hard for me to talk to you the way I would speak to somebody I was in business with. Mm -hmm if we're supposed to be splitting all of the responsibility and stuff, right. you know? And um, I appreciate you um, understanding that the conversations have to be had yeah, and course. that they're not personal. Of course not. This is the business part of the... Yeah. I know what I signed up for. Okay. Yeah. And, and like I've... Uh, I, you don't have to be me. As a matter of fact, I don't want you to be me. I don't not, don't take this personally. I don't want to be I, you. I'm so glad. <laughs> but find your path. Yep. Find your path. Yep. And if something's too easy, don't do it. Yeah. That means it's not good. Yep. That means it's not good. Love you. Love you. Um, all right. Listen. Guys, this week in Cincinnati, Jacob Wolf, I love you. I, but can I also just say, I am so uh, grateful to well, I spoke to the grandkids last night dude how are they it's just so joyful mm. it, you know last night I was supposed to do some work and I really was supposed to look at this special and I, I don't think we're supposed to say their names I wouldn't but the oldest mm -hmm. he and I talked for probably an hour and 15 minutes just about Dungeons and Dragons. Love it. And he wrote me up a character that he's sending to me and we're going to FaceTime and play Dungeons and Dragons. You're playing D&D? &D? With him. My buddies play D&D. &D. Can I just tell you, can I tell you for real, as I was like, I got to do this work, I got to do this work, I kept thinking that the first five minutes of he and I talking and then I was like, the fuck, I got to do this work. You know what's really important? Is me giving my grandson 100% of my attention mm -hmm. because this relationship is more important than any special I'm going to put out, yep. any joke I'm going to write, any whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. I, when I locked in I and I hung up the phone, dude, I was beside myself how happy and how grateful I felt to just have that in my life. Yeah. So cool. So fucking cool. He also asked, he said, uh, he was like, can you write a stand-up comedy act? I was there. 
Well, he asked me. Oh. He was like, can you write a stand-up comedy act that I can watch? And I was like, probably not. But yeah. I'll, get, I'll get the puppets out. I'll see, like, you know, I don't know, man. That's hard. For 10 or 11, that's going to be a tough one for me. Mm -hmm. I want to see, what are we laughing at at 10 or 11? Poop jokes. I got a lot of those. Great. You're set. Okay. I think poop jokes. You know, I was killing uh, because the youngest, I was on the phone with him before I was talking to his brother, and I was in our little food pantry, and he was, he was like, because he called them meat stick. He was like, I'm eating my meat stick. And I go, I got meat sticks. I go, and Beth, you know, is babe, your mom's baby. Mm -hmm. I go, but I hide him from baby. And he goes, show me. So I walk into the pantry and I showed him where I hide mm -hmm. the meat sticks. And I go, you know what else I hide? I have my chocolate bars. And I showed him where. And I walk out of the pantry and he goes, when I talk to BB next week, I'm going to tell her where you keep all your stuff. <laughs> That's amazing. And I, I was love like, that. yeah, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> Trust a seven-year-old with your secrets. Yeah. That's right, fine. Listen, man. As always, this podcast is my true privilege of the week. And um, I want to tell you, I appreciate, you know, I know some conversations that you and I have, you're ready for me to wrap it up. And you let me just babble on. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. Too. Mm -hmm. you, and I know that they get repetitive. But that's also my fault. Why? Because if I were to listen the first time we had that conversation and switch it up, we wouldn't have to continue having these conversations. Okay. I don't think there's a fault. I think it's not, life. Not, not fault, but like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, I'm also part of the reason we have to keep having those conversations. I want you to look at this, okay? And everybody listening, this is Josh Wolf's theory, not just on art, mm -hmm. but on life. I, I know, I look at life and art in particular as a puzzle. Yeah. No failures, guys. You're trying to find the right piece. If you were doing a puzzle and you were like, oh, I think this piece goes there and you and you tried it and it didn't fit, you wouldn't be like, oh, I'm a failure. You'd be like, well, that piece didn't fit. Let me find the piece that does. You wouldn't throw that piece away either because mm -hmm. you know it fits somewhere, somewhere else. else in the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so if you... I know a lot of it, dude, is wrapped up in how you feel about yourself somewhere. Mm -hmm. There is a... There is a um, where you kind of sabotage yourself a little bit. Mm -hmm. Some of it is a fear of failure, right? Okay. Yep. And I would just tell you there is no failure because oh. it's it's pieces in the puzzle. Yep. For okay. me, it, it, for me, I heard somebody say this once, and it was and it was kind of eye opening. It's like failures aren't failures; they're lessons learned. It's a hundred percent. It's a hundred percent. So I love that. Okay. So, uh, lesson learned, and we're gonna take it running. Let's crush it this week in Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati. We're at Liberty Township for. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The guys from Bird Brain, we're going to come see you guys. I can't wait to get some new stuff. Listen, Thursday is going to be real loose. It's it's Red's opening day, so I'm assuming we're going to be a little light. Okay. Um, I mean, Joey Votto doesn't play for the team anymore. So though. if you want to come out and see a real loosey-goosey show, uh, that's the one. Yep. Uh, 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 again, the Gramercy Theater, April 13th in uh, New York. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's Netflix get it. Netflix is a joke. May 9th, uh, Bourbon Room, Hollywood. Anything else, we're on tour pretty much every weekend until the first two weeks of June. Uh, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. And as per usual, thank you guys always. It wouldn't be possible without you. Tell somebody you love them today. Do something nice for someone. We love you. Later, everybody.